16 is they couldn't break a Wigan defence that's now way more organised. Mm. Couldn't break them down with anything but kicks. Um, and possibly a, a slightly fortuitous bounce away from young Tom Davies on the first uh, try as well. So I think when you put it into that context, the last, the last half an hour, 35 minutes from Wigan were... Probably as well as we've put things together all season, it's a full package. We were defensively strong, well disciplined. We um, had a you know really good defensive line speed as well as gap coverage. We didn't let uh, Catalans have much of an opportunity at us. And then on the flip side, George Williams was back to his sort of best, throwing a few trick plays in there, mm-hmm. and but that, that came in the first half of the trial where he did the throw up and then. Uh, kicked it through and stuff but the confidence was back with him and that showed in the second half when he was taking on the line to score his try as well as putting other people in and and that sort of stuff Um, Burgess grabbing a hat trick that just shows the the golden edge is is back in form fuck you hell (laughs) I'll have to start putting all this shit again now go on on. Uh, then obviously Sam Tompkins grabbed grabbed a try which was kind of icing on on the cake in a a way it was a scrappy little effort that he uh, did well to to get to yeah. uh, before anyone else, but certainly our forwards started to take prominence. I think the forwards started the game really well from both from both sets of, of from both sets of players. Um, on the when the interchanges happened, young Margale is it from uh, Catalan really really impressed me to know Margale. Um, as well as the bus, uh, but whereas Wigan, I think dropped off a little bit. I don't think Tautai played exceptionally well. Uh, Tony Club's more of a, a tackler in this game rather than doing the carries he did the week before. Yeah, and so it all sort of felt like we'd we weren't making the meters. But when Sutton and Nuasala were back in, introduced back into the game on about the fifty minute ish mark, it all turned around. Wigan really were able to ramp things up in the forwards. Both those two played really well to finish out the game, okay. and um, and that's where it all stemmed from. Really, so I was really pleased uh, by the end of it after being quite frustrated after. Fair enough. Calling it now, Castleford Wigan Grand Final. This is what I reckon. If they, you can keep these lads <coughs> fit, I think that's the way the two trajectories are at the moment. So I've got me Greg Eden and I've got me Castleford Wigan Grand Final. And Wigan winning that, I assume. No. Look, we've not had a Grand Final yet in the history of the show that Wigan haven't participated. No, no, exactly. So long may that continue because then it will prove me right. But no, I think now with... with I don't think we're making it. If I'm, if I'm being... So? You know, I think honest I from, I think from the bottom in. of my squeaking in heart. I don't think we're making it. Squeaking, I reckon. Squeaking. You heard it here first. Um, okay, so stats wise, what did the ta- what was the tail of the tape on this one? Um, a seven to five penalty count was a disappointment for the home side. Their visited, visitors made an extra error, but six breaks to four, two hundred and nine more meters at zero point six meters per carry, better average gain. Were where Wigan won this on the stats and led five tries to two and a healthy win in the end. Individually, who stood out for us then? Well, Joe Burgess grabbed his three tries, one hundred and six meters, two clean breaks. Inside of him, Ollie Gildar, a try assist in one hundred and four meters. He's been exceptional since returning from injury. Mm. Anthony Gelling put in a big shift, one hundred and sixty-two meters, four successful offloads despite never being convincingly fit Tom ah. Davies 197 metres Ryan Sutton 129 metres the only worry um, from this was Liam Farrell picking up a, a knock on his knee right. late on tried to play on for about a minute or so but realised it, it wasn't happening um, so he's Sorry. expected to be out of the Thursday night fixture which is a big blow it is so for the Dragons anyone stand out yeah Vince DePaul took his two tries uh, quite well and 100 metres as well to complement that Jason Battieri worked hard with 40 tackles Paul Ayton worked even harder with 50 tackles 11 of which were marker tackles which kept young Alrix to Costa off the field um, Jody brought 106 metres Tony Gigo 181 metres and plenty of pouting as well. There you go. Okay, final game of the weekend then. So Salford taking on Leeds. It finished 24 points to 50 in favour of the visiting Rhinos in front of 5,056 at the AJ Bell, refereed by James Child. Yeah, and probably we'll come to that, I guess. Mm. Um, Dr. Bob Phillips says, Jack Walker had a very solid game and despite the early wobbles that gave the Devils their first try, came through superbly. 
On the Hooter tri- the on the Hooter try was well deserved. Others worthy of a mention are Hall and Ablett because they are always worthy of adoration. And because Ryan made sure he reminded Louis that violence isn't nice with a solid tackle. Very, in very, commas. very good. Tyler Caspan says possibly leads his best performance of the season. Salford flattered to deceive for the first ten minutes, but were overrun from then on with leads far too fast and clinical. Every player contributed, and the Red Devils were blown away by half time. Don't rule out a Leeds Wigan grand final. Well, mm. you heard that here first. Yeah, yeah. I, I, hope you're not, I hope you're wrong, Tyler. I hope the Castleford Tigers are in there. But Our sure friend Rich well. Wilkinson, who has passed his milestone with Glee in the last week, said, Now then, lads, what a first game back. The Rhinos were awesome. A few early errors were just masked by a first half of total class. Salford showed some fight in the second half, but Leeds just closed the game out. Cuffbo was awesome, and Parcel up close is different class. I'm totally buzzing, proving we are a genuine Threat for a trophy, bring on the codheads. Yeah, it was his, his uh, son's first Rhinos game in the flesh as well, hey. so he's getting the family involved in the spirit in a, in a good way. Is our good friend Rich? Fantastic. Yeah, it, it sort of got off to an early start in this one, but it was all leads, wasn't it? Um, for much of the game, and then by the time Salford rallied themselves it was really all over by the shouting wasn't it they killed them round the rook and then that meant there was so much um, space off the back of quick play of the balls and good puncturing runs from the forwards mm. um, with Cuthbertson like Rick says and uh Garber off the bench and even Malali kind of grew into this game as well. Yeah. We haven't seen him do very much and no. in a Leeds shirt this year, I don't feel. But yeah, they, they killed him around the middle, which is what Parcel's been doing to everyone this year. Salford couldn't keep up, kept started started to give penalties away. There was the nasty high tackle on Callum Watkins. Yeah. By Junior Sal, that's got him up for a grade B charge after getting his Simbin. So both Simbinins of the weekend are, are, are being followed up with bans. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it sounded like from the radio commentary, which was a, a Leeds bias one that I listened to, but it um, sounded like Danny Maguire had a very smooth game yeah. in the middle of this. Whilst he didn't show up on the numbers particularly, he was obviously <clears> the controlling influence. It lets Joel Moon be all rangy and skillful. That's um, it. Although on the half hour or mark, he had to slip into the centres. It didn't do his prospects any harm. No. At all, really. No, far from it. And tries across the board as well. Well distributed throughout the lead side as well. Both wingers getting in on the action. Uh, Carl Watkins getting over, so both centre scoring as well. Uh, but Jamie Jones Buchanan try chucked in there as well for good measure. And and Young Walker, again, another solid performance at fullback for this kid. And I know I waxed lyrical about him last week, but he's he's carrying it on. It's, he's proving that it's not, you know, it's, it wasn't a fluke. He was, he was very, very able for Leeds. This, how much he was challenged, I'm not really sure, but... He... Yeah, I think he did contribute a little bit to the the first try, but um, but then you know bounced back and said, he's going to make the he's he's of course fantastic. He, but I like this. I like the fact that he's getting an opportunity at Leeds, and you legislate for the fact that a young player like this will make errors in the same way that St Helens will have done with Danny Richardson. Um, but you legislate for it, and you encourage them, and you develop them. And this is another one off that Headingley production line that has potentially got a very very bright future in front of him. So. It's nice to see the Leeds players getting around him and, and, and supporting him when those errors come. And he got a try back for him. And another solid play, another solid performance, I would say. Yeah, conversely, whilst Josh Wood scored a try for Salford, he sounded from the commentary like he was a little bit out of his depth, wasn't able to control things, wasn't able to be the defensive presence in the middle that they needed. Mm. By the time uh, the zippy Chris Brining came on, it, it was it was too late because Leeds had fully taken control yeah. of proceedings, and then the Simbin happened. Mm. Um, do, have you seen that incident? Have you any opinions on it? Um, well, it was a very heavy challenge, and I don't know that there's a lot of malice in it. No, in I my think, opinion, I think Watkins had already beaten off a couple of players, hadn't he? Yeah. So Sam thought, "I'm going to have to go in hard on him," and has just misjudged it. And yeah, it's the right call. I feel. Yeah. He'll pick um, up a ban. He should have. He, he, he deserved a sin bidding, I would say, but I don't think it was. Well, Julius sounds an hard, honest pro. It I wasn't a certain straight not, red card from the footage I saw. No. I, like I, like I said, I saw a guy who had to go in hard because yeah. the guy had just. Dominated yeah. a couple of opponents and he's in honest. the middle of him, so yeah. he's bounced out to the centres yeah. and he's thinking, I'm going to have to whack this guy and yeah. misjudged it and went a bit high, yeah. a bit, bit careless. There. He's honest, he's honest, and he's not an Edelman in junior cell. So. I, so I don't feel like that. He'll, 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 he'll cop a couple of games for it, maybe, but 
you know, that'll, that's just more your duty of care than anything else that I think he needs to be reminded of, perhaps, rather than, you know, a stern talking to about his discipline and, and over-aggression. The bigger thing for me, and someone who does need who will be getting a stern talking to, and we're going to get back on to respecting the referees again, James Child getting things thrown at him by, inverted commas, fans of our sport, is utterly, utterly reprehensible and just fucking disgusting behaviour. Yeah, and Salford have come out with a statement, strongly worded, mm. and everyone's rallying around the same spirit and message and ethos, apart from a lot of dickhead fans who are still slating referees on these sort of threads on Twitter and Facebook and stuff, and... Yeah. Do you know what? It's, it's a sad situation because we can't turn anyone from our, away from our game financially. But I really don't want to have this sort of stuff in our sport wow, it's point. like this. Your, your team lost by 20 plus 20, points. 26 points. It was done by half time. You were battered by half time because you simply weren't good enough. Mm-hmm. And you choose after the final whistle to throw something at the referee. A no. cup of beer or whatever it might be. Not bad. Absolute life ban. That's simple. Lunacy. Find out who he is. Life ban. Why? Why? Why give people a second chance? Why? Why? Why allow them to to pollute the sport if that's how they choose to behave? I'm all for second chances, but come on, we we. This, you know. I'd give him. I'd give him an opportunity to work his way back in from that life ban if he shows the right sort of behaviour. Mm. I think people deserve the chance to rehabilitate. Um, if it, unless this guy's done the same sort of thing before and already known to the Salford yeah. stewarding and stuff, and then but where does this leave James Child? Why, why, why shouldn't we be seen to be taking a strong stand oh, on protecting? No, our I'm officials? saying ban him, but mm. say you know he can reapply to be able to come back into Super League stadiums in such a period of time, so long as you know yeah. he doesn't drink. Yeah. <laughs> Which is another thing that we all love about bloody rugby. We can all go and have a pint and we know how to behave. It's just it's just another step down the ladder for me. Did you see the video Michael Carter did? Have you had a chance to have a look at that? I spotted that he'd done one. It was after a conversation he had on Twitter with Rod Studd and a few others. And, yeah. and sort of in support of that. I didn't actually view the video though, so you have. Uh, well, yeah, it's just, it's just very much common sense and what you would expect a sensible chairman to be saying about, you know, these are people that give up their, that have committed to refereeing and supporting our game and without them we're nothing and that any you know it's time now to sort of take a step back from this culture that we seem to be getting into of, of bagging every single decision a referee gets wrong and, and putting them under this level of pressure and this scrutiny and then yeah. this, this this public pillorying that they get on the back of that the human they will make mistakes I guarantee you they will make cumulatively less mistakes than your own team will have done in contriving to lose a game so and let's just remember it's I do know, think this is it's sport it's sport you this know. has spurred up another conversation about respect and, and all of Big those time. things and there's talk about some of the referees not giving it back both ways to the players and the clubs and stuff and particularly some of the lower league referees being questioned for the sort of attitude around that sort of thing James Child is not one of those referees no. and actually I don't think he comes across as being rude or dismissive I don't know why he's like off the field he's had some horrible abuse yeah. aimed at him from it. players yeah. from fans from social media yeah. what have you and and thank God someone it's like James Child loves the game as much as he does because exactly. someone who didn't care about rugby league committed the way he does would have walked away are. from that would have gone fuck the lot of you then yeah, you're right. obviously loves rugby league more than the people that are aiming abuse at him Certainly. As far as I'm concerned, so he's fucking fine by me. Anyone who puts a whistle between the lips and goes out and does it is fine by me. No one doing it to get it wrong. Like I've like I've always said, you can get frustrated at them. Yeah. You can sing your standard chants about you know you're not fit to referee and all that sort of stuff that goes on. You can get annoyed at individual decisions at the game. Once the final whistle goes, you can't sit there and blame. Not sit there, sorry. You can sit there and blame them to yourself a little bit, I guess, if you yeah. want. If you're gonna be okay with managing that internal yeah. argument but you can't stand up abuse the referees follow it up after the game with yeah. constant abuse and negative comments and and I'm sorry that the game itself isn't supporting this enough no. there's too many coaches who come out of apologetic statements for the behaviour of their players or their fans by saying the referees aren't showing us respect either or there's a conversation yeah. to have there certainly but you have to have it behind the first step, doors rather than do a game of I know you are you said you are but what am I the first step has to come from those people because those people are mm-hmm. the people that are engendering this by their post-match comments by their 
at, at reactions during the game by yeah. all of those things and Sky have a role to play in this stop fucking showing coaches reactions to decisions yeah. right stop showing coaches reactions to everything yeah. for a start and stop replaying every penalty over and over again when a try is scored two sets later everyone's got a role to play in this we all have a role to play in this yeah. and the positive message about the superb job I mean we talk so wonderfully about the blokes who put the Team 13 shirts on for the mm. World Cup and stuff like that and the guys at the grassroots and they're all